You're watching the show that puts Spartan news in focus. This is Focal Point. Tonight on Focal Point, we'll preview the men's basketball team. Occupy Wall Street pitches a tent in downtown Lansing. And we will take a look at how MSU celebrated the homecoming week. Focal Point starts now. I'm Emily Fox. And I'm Jennifer Chen. Welcome to Focal Point. On September 17, thousands of people started a new social movement to occupy Wall Street when they protest on the streets of Manhattan. In the past months, the movement spread to the several other cities, including Lansing. Andrew Nelson takes us to occupy Lansing's campsite for more on this story. I'm really upset with uh, the economic calamity that was caused by Wall Street. Jim Williams is one of many who decided to join a national social movement that found its way to Lansing this month. Occupy Lansing is a branch of the current Occupy Wall Street movement protesting corporate greed and social inequality. That sort of nonsense shouldn't be allowed in our country for people to be able to do that type of thing and get away with it. Occupy Lansing is based at Lansing's Reuters Park and began with a capital protest on October 15th. Because the national movement is young, its messages are broad. But one idea the protesters share is the need for change. Hopefully the powers that be are going to see that we're serious and we're just so tired of what's going on. Government, student loans, mortgages. The message of the Occupy movement may be a little unclear, but the people out here today know who they're representing. One percent of uh, the people in America controls approximately half of, of the money and the other half is to be divvied up among the other 99%. These are my brothers and sisters. It's like a international movement of nonviolent resistance against the 1% that are controlling everything. Occupy Lansing supporters are taking advantage of their rights to peaceably assemble and express their opinions to educate people about their mission, and organizers haven't been disappointed. It's fantastic. It's, it's great. It's like uh, seeing uh, people wake up from a dream. And, and finally uh, end the nightmare of oppression. And they don't plan on leaving until their voices are heard. I have no plans to go back inside anytime soon. For Focal Point, I'm Andrea Nelson. The protesters say they plan on staying in Michigan's capital until changes are made. The Michigan legislature has proposed a series of bills recently that some say target the LGBT community. One Senate bill would ban benefits to unmarried partners. East Lansing, Ingham County and MSU currently provide these benefits. Another bill would legalize discrimination in housing based on sexual orientation or student status. East Lansing City Council unanimously opposed the bill at a recent City Council meeting. This is bad for local communities. It's bad for the state of Michigan. Uh, and it's really just an unnecessary intrusion into local control and into our ability to respect the equal dignity of all of our residents. Council member Nathan Triplett says East Lansing is in support of the LGBT community. He notes that East Lansing was the first city in the nation to ban discrimination in employment based on sexual orientation. Proponents of the bill say sexual orientation and student status is not protected under the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act. Buying beer kegs in Michigan will be a little more difficult starting November 1st. A new law requires kegs to be sold with identification tags to verify the buyer. Buyers must now sign a receipt with their name, address, phone number, and driver's license when purchasing a keg, which police can use to determine who provided beer at a rated party and to help curb underage drinking and drunk driving. If the beer is being served to minors, the purchaser of the keg can receive a misdemeanor citation. Police are hoping this new law will make people think twice about buying kegs for underage drinkers. One local business owner thinks this could have a negative effect for both his businesses and his customers. The purpose of it is supposedly to prevent underage drinking, which it's not going to prevent underage drinking. They will have somebody purchase cases of beer or What's been happening actually is the hard stuff, the hard booze is selling better now than the beer. The new law means more paperwork for retailers and buyers, but the police are hoping the extra trouble will be worth it. Michigan State University gained some national academic attentions last week by making the list of the world's best universities. 
U.S. News released the list of the 400 best universities worldwide last week. MSU came in at number 164. It was one of seven Big Ten schools to make the list come in alongside Michigan, Northwestern, Ohio State, Pennsylvania State, and Minnesota. Michigan State University has fallen 93 places since the initial ranking at 71. The United States has more universities on the top 400 list than, list than any other country. Last week was full of football, ice cream and music, all in the name of Spartan Spirit. It's all about MSU home on, ho homecoming in this week's on-campus report. Jameson Williams joins us now with these stories. Jameson? Thanks, Jen. During MSU's homecoming week, the University Activities Board presented the sounds of homecoming. This yearly event featuring four MSU a cappella groups is considered one of the most popular among students and the UAB says the event gets bigger each year. Around 300 students packed into the MSU Union main lounge to hear the Spartan discords, ladies first, state of fifths, and the a cappellas. Many members of the homecoming court were in also attendance. The Sounds of Homecoming has been a tradition for 10 years and continues to be a popular event during homecoming week. College Game Day and ESPN were on Michigan State's campus for homecoming this year, and lots of other events happened on campus to get students pumped for the game. The cold, windy weather didn't stop Spartan fans, young and old, from stopping by The Rock for a special ice cream treat on homecoming Friday. As part of the homecoming festivities on and around campus all week, the MSU Dairy Store and the University Activities Board passed out free ice cream to anybody passing by. Besides eating ice cream, those that showed up played games and entered raffles to win prizes. Sparty even made a special appearance to get everyone fired up for homecoming week. School spirit and it really brings people together. I love that MSU feels even more so like one community. All the students feel like together, like there's a lot of togetherness and um, there's a lot of school pride that week. The game against Wisconsin was the second night game this season. The MSU Formula Racing Team took part in the Electrical Engineering Homecoming Tailgate. The team pulled eight former cars out of storage earlier in the week, but because of transportation issues, they only displayed one. The display at the tailgate, also known as Car 51, is the most current car the team built and raced. Electrical Engineering alumni, families, and even members of the Solar Racing Team gathered to find out how the car works. Past members of the Formula Team also stopped by to see the improvements to the car. Our cars have gotten lighter, stronger, stiffer, and it's just cool seeing like pretty much the grandparents and like all of the alumni cars, and it's just kind of a nostalgic feeling seeing like all of these different things that went in to build the program that we currently have today. The team is extremely proud of the car they built and displayed on Saturday. However, they plan on next year's car being even lighter and faster than car 51. Everyone loves a parade. The MSU Homecoming Parade was bustling with floats, music, and hordes of students and alumni. MSU women's basketball coach Susie Merchant led the parade as Grand Marshal. The Homecoming Parade is a long-standing tradition. That's what's happening on campus. I'm Jameson Williams. Back to you. Obaba unveiled a plan this week to lighten the burden on students paying back loans. The plan would require those in debt to pay only 10% of their discretionary income rather than the previous 15. Additionally, re remaining doubt will be forgiven after 20 years instead of 25 students who take out a loan in 2008 and this who take, a, a, take, a, take out loans between 2008 and 2012 will benefit. Coming up after the break, Cata earns $4 million in grant money. And later on, we will have our first ever consumer report on the new drought Bionic. They've been called leaders, lifesavers, and world changers. They're also called Spartans. The day we created a cancer drug that saved millions of lives began like any other day. And when we developed a new way to purify the world's water supplies, it might have been a Tuesday or possibly a Thursday. 
And whether it's alternative energy or better food safety, the next time we help create a solution to one of the world's great problems, we'll be proud. Then we'll get back to work. Michigan State University. Spartans will. Welcome back. The Department of Transportation issued a release saying that CATA won a competitive grant that allows them to replace the old buses. The grant places an emphasis on environmentally conscious transportation. Since hybrid electric energy will fuel the buses, some bus riders complain about the punctuality of the buses. A CATA assistant executive says improvement depends on the size and scope of the vehicles. Some improvements that CATA should have is having the 33 bus come more often, I think, and probably some other buses too, because like today I had to wait 30 minutes to get to, on a bus to get to my class, and I ended up being late for an exam. Both new and rehabilitated buses will reduce fuel costs and give riders a more quality ride. Campers glow the Greenway's energy efficient light bulbs. And Michigan earns a high ranking for recycling. Jessica Brown has more in this week's environment report. Jessica? Thanks, Emily. Michigan State's campus had an extra dose of green this past week. The homecoming committee selected Glow Green Go White as the theme this past year. Spartans were encouraged to exchange their normal light bulbs for green ones to show their team pride. Michigan has recently been named one of the greener states when it comes to recycling. Recycling efforts across the country have been leveling off since 2005, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Michigan stats, however, go against this trend. A recent study says 90% of our recycling intake is actually recycled. The recycling center at MSU is the biggest in the central Michigan area, giving recycling options to people who do not receive curbside services in Lansing and Grand Ledge. The center also takes plastic-like milk jugs that cannot be recycled elsewhere. It has become a model for other colleges trying to build their own centers. Local residents are thankful for such a convenient facility. It's very positive and at least we're good at something. <laughs> Too fast. I mean, our economy isn't great and everything else, but at least we recycle. So I think, and every time I come here, I'm amazed at how busy it is. I think that's great. The MSU Recycling Center is also made from a variety of recycled materials to support green efforts not only in the Lansing area, but across the country. Volunteers from Meridian Township and MSU worked together to help improve the safety of the Red Cedar River. This cleanup effort didn't involve garbage bags or picks, but instead used canoes and chainsaws. The volunteer effort removes fallen trees from the Red Cedar that block the river's passage for canoes and kayaks. Clearing the trees from the river's path also serves to prevent flooding by allowing for a more natural flow of the water. What the river um, clearing will do is primarily prevent the redirection of the current into washing out the banks. It'll help keep the main stream flowing clear. This can be good for recreation paddlers and also especially for safety of recreation paddlers as well. The Red Cedar River clearing event occurs twice a year. That's all for Health and Environment. I'm Jessica Brown. Back to the desk. Uh, we will introduce you to the men's Spartan basketball team. I'm Annie Cook, and after the break, we'll show you the newest smartphone on the market and how it just might become your new best friend. The day we created a cancer drug that saved millions of lives began like any other day. And when we developed a new way to purify the world's water supplies, it might have been a Tuesday or possibly a Thursday. And whether it's alternative energy or better food safety, the next time we help create a solution to one of the world's great problems, we'll be proud. Then we'll get back to work. Michigan State University. Spartans will. Just hand me down, give me a place 
to be. Welcome back. I'm Hannah Saunders. This week in sports, Spartan football took down the top-ranked Wisconsin Badgers at, uh, in a battle for the ages. It could not have been dreamed up any better. The exciting finale dubbed the Rocket capped off the intense battle with fourth-ranked and previously undefeated Wisconsin as the Spartans pulled off the upset 37-31. The win keeps the Spartans undefeated in conference play. The Spartans fell into a 14-0 hole early in the game, but the defense responded. Safety Trenton Robinson intercepted a pass from Wisconsin star quarterback Russell Wilson. The Spartans racked up a forced safety, blocked field goal, and blocked punt. Wide receiver Keyshawn Martin had two touchdowns on the day, leading the team to the most exciting finish of the year. We work on it every Thursday. We work on it over and over and over. We call it our rocket series. And we executed it, ball bounced our way. Obviously, there's a little bit of luck there that plays into it, but uh, we executed and we just kept believing. The Spartans are now ranked number nine after having their 12th consecutive home win. Kirk Cousins, MSU all-time winningest quarterback, has been named the 2011 National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete Class. He has also become one of the 16 finalists for the William V. Campbell Trophy, which recognizes an individual as the best scholar athlete in the nation. Cousins will be presented an $18,000 postgraduate scholarship at the awards dinner on December 6th in New York City. He is only the fifth national scholar athlete in Michigan in history to receive this award. The Michigan State's basketball team officially kicked off their season during Midnight Madness, but the first up-close look at the current Spartans came on Media Day. Focal Point's Jameson Williams has more from the Breslin Center. The banners that cover the ceiling of Breslin Center are synonymous with the Energizer Bunny. They just keep going and going. The program's hardwood dominance the last two decades has been impressive, which is why last year's disappointment had the coach thinking. I had to really reassess. You know, it's easy to think players get fat and sassy, did coaches, did people around. This remains a mystery. What is clear, however, is the Spartans are receiving lower expectations this year, and while height may be down, Izzo won't be. Good enough players too deep at each position. We just don't have the experience, so it's a little bit more unknown. The Spartans welcome in a trio of highly touted freshmen who hopefully will fill in the gaps left behind from the departed seniors. Uh, giving this team, you know, the, the style of play, uh, the hard work, things like that. So it's definitely like, you know, there's definitely pressure on you know, me and, you know, the rest of the freshmen just coming in and having an impact. Just because Michigan State doesn't have a big name on the team this year like Magic Johnson or Kalen Lucas doesn't mean that someone can't step up and step out. Senior forward Draymond Dede Green might be this player. He will undoubtedly be the vocal and team leader the Spartans will need to push them to the next level. We all have our own expectations as well, and our expectation won't be anything less than it is every year. So you know, I want to help these guys get to experience the Final Four and Big Ten Championship and all the things that I've experienced in my time here. Despite the lowered expectations, don't expect the Spartans to play like it. We're not going to disappoint you. We're going to be a better team in a lot of ways this year, and we're going to see what that turns out in wins and losses. This team will play underdog, but will be ready to make their imprint in the Spartan sand. For Focal Point, I'm Jameson Williams. Michigan State opens up its season with an exhibition game against Ferris State on October 30th. This year's MSU basketball teams take the court for the first time. The annual Midnight Madness marks the official beginning of the basketball season. Focal Point's Jennifer Chen takes us there. Even if you try, you wouldn't be able to avoid getting anxiety. They're really entertaining. Thousands of fans came to the Breslin Center for Midnight Madness. Yeah, I think it's really cool how everyone shows up to watch uh, their favorite team and how the coaches come out and represent themselves. It's what you've been trained for. After arriving in a model fat agent, men's basketball hand coach Tom Izzo electrified the crowd. Midnight Madness. The marching band, the drum line, and the cheerleaders entertain the crowd to keep them fired up. <laughs> Celebrate the moment! It's a new season of this year. Before kicking off the official basketball competition, the real reason for this students, of course, on the court. 
It's the first time this year that MSU basketball teams are allowed to practice together, and the fans are treated to a great show. Uh, on the women's side, the women come out and we get to see some of the freshmen for the first time. Uh, and then the little scrimmage is a lot of fun. Some of the players and that kind of thing is really great. After long evening fun, basketball fans left tired but satisfied. For Focal Point, I'm Jennifer Chen. Hockey junior Zach Golombieski has decided not to return this season after injuring his back over the summer. The former winger was diagnosed with another health condition that prevented his back from healing. He ends his hockey career after two seasons. With four straight wins against Michigan, one fan thinks he has the secret to the Spartan success. Go bronze? The debut of the edgy new Spartan gear is already being sported by fans. I like them. But the new uniforms aren't the only reason that Spartans are excited that this game is finally here. On October 15th, Michigan State beat U of M 28 to 14. And the Spartans' first four-year straight win in almost 50 years over the Wolverines is perhaps thanks to a furry lucky charm. Michigan has never beat Michigan State in football since he started flying here. Wally the Wolverine Pelt is a popular stop for tailgaters who want to do a little boxing or play their version of tetherball. The Wolverine came to me when a trapper on the Yukon River said and the state lets us get a Wolverine occasionally. So I told him the story of the rivalry, and he said, you wouldn't want a Wolverine pelt, would you? And I said, I certainly would. The dangling pelt named Wally has helped students and other fans navigate their way to favorite tailgate spots along the swarming stadium outskirts for years. So it became a landmark. Michigan! Though the day didn't pan out as he'd hoped, this U of M fan didn't let Wally's situation get him down before the game. I feel he should be on the ground run and just like Denard Robinson will be today. And now that another rivalry game has passed, Wally will hibernate for the long Michigan winter shared by fans rooting for both sides. Uh, he's in a closet at our house and he gets cleaned like any other fur once a year. If you're looking to catch some more MSU U of M rivalry action, our men's soccer team will take them on tomorrow at home. Well, that's all for sports. I'm Hannah Saunders. Back to you two at the desk. With all the choices in mobile devices out there, it's easy to be overwhelmed. Annie Cook gives us an inside look at the new Droid Bionic in our new Consumer Report segment. Verizon Wireless recently introduced the Droid Bionic, a phone that brags of 4G network as well as a dual-core processor, features that Verizon says make it the fastest and most intuitive phone on the market. Verizon says the Bionic will change the consumer's expectations of their wireless experience. So not only are you ruling the air with how fast the phone can browse through video and web content, but moving between application to application moves very, very quickly as well. So it's a very seamless and it's, it's an experience like none other in, in wireless. Focal Point took it to the streets to test the company's claim. Okay, so I just sent a text message. Oh, and it sent right away. Mine would have taken like, like it would have taken at least 30 seconds to send it. I finally got my chance to play around with the Bionic. One of the things that Verizon's really boasted about this phone is how quick it goes in between pages to pages. So let's see how it does. If I'm looking for a coffee shop, it is rather quick. I'm going to check out the Big B website. It moves between pages really quickly. In the age of the iPhone, the Bionic has stiff competition, but Verizon says the phone will give other smartphones a run for their money. It stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything else uh, on the market right now. But one of the most interesting features of the Bionic is its intuitive nature. In your contact list, you can create your favorites to get in contact with someone uh, quickly. But probably my favorite part of it is that when you go into your contact list, right above, it'll have people that you've called most recently or that you've called more, most often. For example, if it's your spouse and you call them while you're going leaving work every day, they'll usually appear right at the top of your contact list. I guess it, it kind of is hard to see because it's not personalized on here, obviously, so it's kind of hard to see what it'd be like if it was my own. While the Bionic is packed with exciting features, it's important to do your research and find out the features that are most important to you. Don't rely on sales pitches and gimmicks that may cost you more and you'll never use. For Focal Point, I'm Annie Cook.
That's our show for tonight. We leave you now with more sounds of MSU's homecoming. Thanks for watching. Good night.